create the shadows for customer. She can see the highlight more clearly. And then he used the base of 6.23 with 6%. I think the color came out really nice and it's really harmonized with the skin. So she actually looked more beautiful. So k -Alphas, um actually have the same kind of um, belief like Mr. Stefan said last, last week. We make clients pretty, not trendy. So I think this is something we, we want to do and we also believe in it too. Um, so I think this color, a very simple technique, but it's created the shadow, which not so simple. Okay, Roger, is there anything you want to, um, to say about the color? Okay, that's a great tip. So Roger said, um, in a haircut, you see a lot of like slicing technique, a lot of thinning out, like point cuts, in order to achieve a very soft layering. But this would not easy for when we're doing highlights. Because when we're weaving from the roots, most of the time you've got lots of color on the roots, but not on the ends. You're not able to see any highlights on the ends. So how Roger does is, he rather do less on the parting, do less color on the parting. So that's benefit is, your customer don't get a horrible regrowth when they have brown, strong highlight. You see the black roots, and very faded color. I didn't think this is a work well on the team. So that's why Roger has put the color more on the ends, less on the roots. So this is the very um, interesting tips about the coloring. Thank you. Well, done already. Okay, Kenny. You ready? Okay. Can you tell us about the color? You don't seem to too many strong highlight for for the beautiful model. They also have a lot of highlight. Okay, first thing is um, because the model got a very fine lip hair, so she don't want to give her a very light color to make the hair look even less. So I think it's a, the, the first starting point is from the customer. Okay. And then she did a very fine section around the hairline to make it darker. So normally our hairline's got finer hair, right? We got that's why she keep the color darker around the face. So more like like eyeliner effect. So it makes the hair look stronger and more thicker. That's a great idea. Okay, so and then she do a verse uh, in one. The base color is very long. Okay, she also used the 6.23, but she lightened already. Because this model has red hair before. She has a very strong red, um, deep red color. She um, she lightening it with um, uh, platinum 6%, and then just about level 6, and then she put the 6.23 to achieve this color. And then she adding the some low light too. So you see the shading that was hidden by the light. It's not just simple one color. So although the detail are very small, but the color will notice it, that if we're telling them we do a darker, like an eyeliner effect on the face, and then give the depth off by the low lights, 
So she will feel great after this. And the color, very soft and silky. Wow, finish. I'm going to talk about styling. Can you share some styling tips about Asian income? Okay. First thing is the when we're doing styling, we have to really look at the face shape of your customer. Um, an Asian face shape usually flat and wide, so these two corners normally very flat. So Roger remind us that we have to uh, avoid making the shape too square, making it too square. So that's why he add a lot of height on the crown, which like most of you do, um, to give her better face shapes. And girls normally don't like to wear the hair really high now. So that's why he put the fringe a bit Flatter. <laughs> she can't wait to show you her hair. <laughs> I think this color would be uh, applicable on many, many, many customers, and it was changeable. You can you can give her a perm, you can give her a highlight, so you can work really well based on this hair color. Okay. Okay, this is the last bit. How are you going to style it? The, the hair? They demand how you bomb how you to style it. Yeah. Yeah. So she said she when she's doing styling work, um, she was trying to um, stimulate when the client do it at home. How is she going to do it? So she will show her the way that she can able to manage it at home with the same style if she wants like to use the tongs or even any brush. So the section is very simple. Just take the whole sections from the side to the back, like one by one. I think total like six or seven sections. So this actually very easy for a customer to handle at home. Um, since we don't have many natural waves, as, as all of you does, so the hair normally don't keep, keep it and last it very long when we do uh, blow dry or setting. Uh, and also the weather in Hong Kong is very humid. When the car walk out from the salon, the hair will start to get flat. So every step she walk, the hair getting flatter and flatter. So we need a lot of products to help uh, in order to, uh, to maintain the loads. Um, I've, we use a lot of these technique in Hong Kong because um, this is very light, uh, firm of tech and it can hold the hair better by the time you still can blow dry. Um, do you have this product? Okay. Technique P. Tiny outline. Yeah. It's a great thing. Smells good. <laughs> do you want to take a look? Yeah? So basically when you do this type of haircut, it only takes you about 15 to 20 minutes. And if you've seen a lot of our haircut, we don't thin out the hair like like the um, Japanese style. Uh, I, let me share you some tips about, I have studied in Japan for several times, and 
And we were thinking, wow, well, how come this guy can cut the hair like really thin out and the hair would not frizzy? And actually, it's not their, their hair is very frizzy. But every customer know how to style the hair at home. They spend an hour and an hour for makeup and style the hair before they go to work, which normally Hong Kong girls doesn't. <laughs> they don't spend time even doing makeup, they spend time to sleep. <laughs> so, so that's why we have to do some hairstyle which fit to their lifestyle. So we are not able to fit so even though when we're doing a, a slide cut, we have to use a very sharp scissors not to pull out the hair because um, once we thin out the hair with the weather, the hair gets even more frizzy and you can't really perm the hair because there's no hair. So there are a lot of different styles. When you do a Japanese client in your country or do a Chinese client in your country, they actually have a little bit different. And even our hair it's different. Um, Japanese hair is oval shaped, more like yours, more like yours, so they tend to have more natural weight, relatively easier to cut. The Chinese hair is brown, that's why they are straight and thick. So when you cut it, have to be uh, have a better finish, otherwise the hair get um, the hair scrub get um, damaged on the end, and the layer doesn't smooth enough. Um, I think these are the, the great tips that you can use on your customer. Great! Thank you.